Hey, Archie, it's good to see you. Good to see you too, thank you. Listen, I know you've been working night and day on the video for your next collection. Can you tell us a little bit about the collection itself and what you want to express in the video that we're going to be seeing? Well, I think for the first time, what we're going to do is we're going to launch a video, a short fashion film that what it intends to do is create a mood, create a scenario for what the collection is going to be. And the collection will be released on the 5th of February. So this is, it's only a little hint of what's yet to come. Um, so the video is based on true stories. Let's not get into detail. Let's just leave it there. Um, <laughs> you know, based on whoever near me, if not myself, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mention that. I'm not gonna cry find that. Um, so yeah, and, and, the, and the, the common point in all of the stories is the car. So, so, you know, we, we did this marvelous story based on, um, you know, for, for, the, for the launching of the handkerchief that I'm wearing now. Um, and it's all based on speed, desire, you know, outdoors and stuff. So we wanted to sort of like capture that and translate it onto the new collection, you know, but grab it forward. And um, I'm really happy about it. You know, it, it's stories that they all happen in a car. Mm -hmm. um, it's all very, it's, it's a lot to do with, you know, the contact, desire, you know, in between two people, three people even, you know, um, and it sort of like captures my world and, and what I'm all about, you know, um, you know, very effortless, very, yeah, sorry. But no, 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 but tell me about the connection to the handkerchief because I know that the, I, the cockerchief, is that it? So what is the oh, connection, the, the follow thread between that and the car and the, you know, these, these tantalizing, you know, encounters? Oh. Well, you know, I think obviously the cockatoo is very, well, it's, it's got a link to my work. Yeah, let's say it's, yeah, cheeky, kinky. I don't like the kinky word, but yeah, I suppose it could be. But it's always like playing on the edge, you see. So it's always like kinky, but not quite. Or, mm -hmm. you know, yes, it might be kinky, but at the end of the day, it's a silk scarf, isn't it? So it's a lot to do with you know, um, these sort of thing where, where you think you know what you're seeing, but then you have another look and you're just like, oh, wait a minute. Um, it's the same with my clothing, you know, you look at it and it's just, okay, well, we tuxedo, great. But then when you look at it twice, you realize that it's actually a knitted piece, like a fully fashioned piece or, um, or, you know, the same with the denim, you know, you might think, oh, okay, denim, great. Uh, but then you realize that it's all knitted. So it's extra comfort and, you know, um, so it's all about the fit and, and everything. And so it, it was the same with the cockatoo, you know, it, it, it's, it, we must say it's a product that I did back in 2016 when I was at university and, yep. and you know I did I did this sketch based on a handkerchief during Easter during the Easter break and I never really did quite anything with that and, and I thought it was a shame and um, and we were thinking you know because we launched our website and you know it's it's quite difficult to have a broad range of products so I, I thought why not launch relaunch the handkerchief the cockerchief mm -hmm. and um, and included as a you know as part of the, the launching of the website and it, it you know it was quite su successful i'm really happy about it yeah you got a lot of coverage for that i gotta say <laughs> yeah well i mean it is quite catchy in the space isn't it so yeah. you know, you've got i mean can you see it i think once you see it you really really see it but then until you do you don't on, until you do it is quite tricky you know and then you realize you know you realize the sperms and the cocks all over and mm -hmm. you know the vagina signs symbols and everything but um you know i'm really happy about it so that's also featured in the video of course mm -hmm. as well as a preview of the fall winter 21 collection that features for the first time uh, women's wear looks not well, so just tell me a little bit about that because you're for those who might not be familiar with your work you are your bread and butter what you love is knitwear and like you said you know making knitwear, showing knitwear in ways that people aren't familiar with it, you know, making mm -hmm. uh, denim that is actually knitwear and, and other, you, you know, a trench coat that's actually knit, etc. But what drew you from the jump to knitwear? What was your, what was that, you know, aha moment when you're like, I want to show, push this as far as I can? Well, it's, it's not as interesting. I mean, it might be interesting, but it's not as interesting as you would think, you know, the, the great story for me to say would be, oh, my grandma has been a great knitter since I was a kid and she taught me how to knit and everything. She's never knitted anything. She's a horrible cook. Like, you know, I, and that's why, that's why I really, I really had a different approach to knitwear because I thought it was something really, you know, dedicated to all people, you know, like an old craftsmanship kind of thing. And, and that really never caught my eye. And um, it wasn't until I got to university where when I was in foundation, someone 
showed me how to knit on a knitting machine. And I was like, oh, wait a minute, that's, that's quite, you know, that's quite appealing. And, and there was something really geeky about me, about mm -hmm. it. You know, there, there was some, an approach that was super geeky and it, it just worked. And, um, and you know, you know how it goes, you know, you're in Barcelona, you want to go to London to study fashion, so you do. And then you get to London and it's just like, okay, what kind of fashion am I going to study? What pathway? And then knitwear. And then you're just like, oh, okay, right. I'm just going to become the best of it. Or like, you know, trying to develop. And it's just like a chain of dreams and achievements and, you know, goal settings. And it just, it was natural kind of thing. And then as soon as I, as soon as I knew that that was sort of my thing, um, something really good happened but at the time it, it wasn't that good which was the fact that I hated it I hated <laughs> everything no no but I hated everything that knitwear meant you know at one point these tutor of mine bless her she was about 182 years old she came and she was like all right gather around I'm gonna teach you how to knit a sock at that point I was just like are you bloody kidding like really a sock Central St Martin's she said well you know it's Christmas so Gonna tell you how how to knit a stocking, Christmas stocking. I was like, are you are you nuts? Like, are you, are you on drugs? Really? Like for me, it was surreal. So the difficult point was to sort of like cope with what knitwear meant or the general picture was, and trying to make it your own. Mm -hmm. you, after. Really, you really made knitwear look people reassess the idea of what knitwear is and what it can become. For sure. and the other thing is, it's either that, I mean, nothing wrong about it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I've got, I've got a great friend of mine that I studied with her, Elise, I love you, you know that. Um, and she's, she's the cable queen, you know, and that's great. And I, I, you know, I love that as well. However, it's not my gag yeah. at all. Um, said, said that, having said that, uh, there's another world that I didn't really quite connect with, with just the whole polyamide techie of leisure thing, you know, that kind of like Adidas sort of yeah. world. That clearly wasn't it either. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've got these two scenarios in front of you and none of them are really appealing. However, you do like the car you're driving. Yeah. Um, so what to do? Just make your own pathway, basically. And um, it wasn't until, luckily, it wasn't until after when I started the MA that I met Mark Tappert, um, as well as Fabio Piraz, my course director, bless them both. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Mark, Mark and I really, we did click. It, you know, it was, it was a good match. You know, he, he started Vivian Westwood with her and mm -hmm. he patterned out the whole thing because she, she was like a panel basically. And he sort of like formalized that. So he's very Savile Row. He created the white thin, the thin white duke from okay. Bowen. Um, you know, he's that, he was in that mindset, you know, it was tailoring, proper tailoring, but modern. Yeah. Back in the days and still now. Yeah. But um, so, you know, it was a match and it, you know, we used to talk a lot about private things, about, you know, past. I love fashion history and like, especially the, the one that doesn't come in the book. So it was, it was a dream to meet him. And uh, because he's part of the history, history of fashion. So, um, at one point he was like, so why don't you just do tuxedos and you knit them? I was like, are you, are you nuts? Like, how can you, how could you even? And, um, and that's how it all started. You know, it's, it's as soon as you've got a question or like with Fabio, for instance, I remember him asking the, on the MA, now it's all, all the MA because BA is a totally different story. Yeah. So on the MA, I remember Fabio being like, oh, can, can you actually need something quite similar to Poplin or, you know, something a bit crappy? And the tutor was like, oh, no, that's impossible because, you know, Jersey pattern. Blah, blah. And like four hours later, I already had like a swatch that was perfect for that. So I think it's all about, it's all about setting yourself a challenge, isn't it? And, and that's how it all started. It's very but, organic. But it, it sounds it like you're, challenge, you're challenging a lot, a lot of norms because you said you're bringing also in women's wear, but already your men's wear, there was, you know, uh, the Thin White Duke, there is a kind of retro 70s, also androgynous vibe about oh, what you do with the Yeah, that's how, it started. You know, that's how it started. Yeah. That's how it started. It was more like starting point, that was it. Yeah. Obviously, I think that there always has to be some sort of like historical element, or at least reference onto it. Yeah, touch point. And it, it's all about just asking yourself, who's that person today? Mm -hmm. You know, who's that person, you know? I think as soon as you as soon as you knit it, you're modernizing it. You know, you're making it modern. You're making it current. Mm -hmm. So 
obviously we took that elongated secret and we'll talk about that in the old collection but i think i think it's good to set a context um so we took, took that elongated elongated silhouettes from the late 70s early 80s you know a bit like Miami Vice kind of sort of thing mm -hmm. but more European vision style and um we took that and then obviously because it's knitted it's a bit more slinky because obviously the fabric has more weight so the whole thing it really did work mm -hmm. it moves and very that, differently I mean it really does when it's knit right exactly and it's it's soft tailoring at the end of the day so and there's no cut and sewn involved it's all in one piece so it's really just taking the element of knitwear which is really pretty porte uh, machine knitted, yeah. not hand knit, but you know machine knitted, which is really pretty porte. You know knitting machines like you know rolls and rolls and rolls, and it was really easy to make back in the seventies, uh, when the pretty porte started. So it's taking that, but giving it give it a couture treatment in a way. That that sort of that sort of the vibe. Um, and you and talked yeah, about, it you talked about you know finding the person for today that it would represent, and I mean I, I have to say that you know, Harry Styles is such the perfect epitome of what you're looking for, I would say, that kind of fluidity, that kind of comfort with, you know, a broad range of sexual sexuality and very comfortable in his own skin. Would you would you agree with that assessment or did, or, and what was that experience like to dress him? Because that was quite early in your career. Oh, that, that, no, that was, well, it was thrilling. It was, it was a shame though, because we did, uh, we did a few more looks. That because of COVID and obviously um, the tour has sort of got paused, I suppose. Um, they're sort of on hold, but I'm not even quite sure if you can mention that. But never mind. Um, moving on, it was great. It was great. You know, it's great to work with people that you share the same references with. And it's great to, you know, work with people that you can speak the same language and not, you know, not argue. It was more like, listen, these and this and these are the references. Next day, I had a range of 10 varieties and 10 different styles and looks and, you know, options and, and they worked and, and, you know, we, we worked on a, on a, on a good range of looks and, and it was, it's so great to work with people that don't give you any sort of like guidelines. It's more like, you know, the world's your oyster and just go for it really and just embrace it. And that, you know, it felt, it felt so, so good and obviously later all the exposure we had and all, all you know the reception of the people and how they you know how they loved it and you know he's got a he's got a great group of people behind him following him you know got instagram accounts on what harry's wearing it's it's just it's bonkers it's bonkers but it's great it's, well, it's, it's, it's telling brilliant. that you like that you like that they gave you no boundaries because there are some designers who like to have a brief so that they can feel like no that no, they... no no we did, we did sorry yeah sorry. we did have a brief okay However, the brief was pretty much the one that we already had. Okay. And, um, and then on top of that, the outcomes we were having, it, they were sort of, they were sort of the same outcomes they were expecting. So, and then, well, that's probably, that's probably why they didn't really give us that much of a... Because they know, already knew you could, you were... Yeah, it, the same was, it, it just worked, it worked. It, it was a perfect match. It was a great match, actually. Talk to me about how this last year has been for you, because you mentioned, of course, as everything, you know, shut down, no concerts, no, you know, public gatherings, et cetera, et cetera. One of many things. How have you, because, um, you know, I think, what did you start with SS20? I mean, what a time to start. I mean, so what, how has this year look, been for you? Tell me about it. Um, look, it was challenging. Yeah, let's say challenging, challenging. However, I learned so much from it. Like, I would, I'd go from it. I'd go for it like all the way. Like I, I actually quite loved it at the end. It was challenging. Hey, you tell me really... more, more why you loved it at the end. You gotta tell me more about that. Well, it's more, when you look back, I'm quite, I'm quite an optimistic person, let's say. I, I can but, get, get that from you, yes. No, but it's more like, listen, at the beginning, I thought, I think it was really hard at the beginning when you, when you thought, well, you know, this is gonna change at some point and in September it's gonna be fine. Mm -hmm. And then by September, nothing was really that fine. So that that was tough. However, as soon as you realize that that's the new normality and that's the way it's going to be, at least for a while, there's a lot of looking back and, you know, just being with yourself on your own, you know, just sort of like going through everything, trying to find creative solutions to the problems that, they were, that, that were coming. And 
I think as soon as you click and you realize, I think, you know, you, you can get really like a good outcome out of it. And you can, you know, you can stay positive. Of course, it was challenging, especially, you know, for spring, summer 21, we wanted to change the whole fed. We wanted to change the direction, which we sort of did, but we did more drastically than we want, would have liked. Okay. Because, um, you know, we couldn't develop any tailoring at all, which was a big, 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 um, you know, disappointment for me because I wanted to, as I said at the beginning, the whole silhouette was based on the late 70s. It was really elongated, which, which was great to, you know, get people's attention at the beginning. But then it's not real. Like, it is real, but it's not that. Not, not, it's not that it's not wearable, but it's quite difficult. It's quite tricky. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, that's not really what I go for. I go for pieces that are extreme, but, you know, knitwear is comfort. So and you want to feel desired and you want to feel... You know, it's it, it's supposed to be flattering, and I think it was a difficult fit. However, um, you know, I've reinvented it and I've changed it and I've tweaked it for this season, which I'm really happy about. But yeah, as I said, so spring summer twenty one was supposed to be the breakup season, and we couldn't do that. And um, not just with that, but we only could we could only work on that collection for about two weeks afterwards from the. From the moment that the factories in Italy were, were were allowed to reopen to the actual launching of the collection, we only had about two weeks, so it was really tough. And so, it why then would you say let's add some women's wear into the mix? I mean, was that because you were like, okay, we can't work with the silhouettes in the way that we originally wanted to, and so we're going to do this? Again, it, it's I mean, it's much easier than that. It's from the beginning, from the time that I graduated from Central Saint Martin to the show, the graduation show. Um, we got approached by brands who were, you know, extremely, extremely, extremely supportive from day one. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they asked for women's. Okay. They asked for, for women's sizing. And um, I remember Fabio said to me, the moment you realize that this is going to be successful in women as well, or even more than, it, you know, it is a man, that's the moment where you're going to start making money. So um, <laughs> the moment has come. <laughs> and um, no, so I've started to work on pieces that are not just women sizing so the menswear pieces that I had with women sizing but actually especially just for women pieces so pieces just for women mm -hmm. and um and I have to say I really really liked it you know I it's not you know it is oh god I'm so sad I cannot show you actually I, I could possibly show you well this but, isn't gonna go out until after your oh it is Set. It's not going out until after your video comes out, so you're safe. I've, you... got, I've got fitting images that you have to promise you. No, oh, actually, don't show these because I think. Oh well, then yeah. don't show them to me. Let, keep them a mystery. Um, Is that yeah, okay. but, but so, but then tell me a little bit about. So you you're you were expanding for women's how, and you talked about tailoring. So when you're talking about women's pieces, what did you want to give to women that you didn't have in your panoply of of design or aesthetic up until now? So. Of course, we did have the tuxedo. It's mm -hmm. a knitted tuxedo, knitted tuxedo on a woman, done a million times. So that, and it worked, and they were really happy about it, and that's great, and you know, we love that, and we celebrate that. However, you know, it's more thinking who my woman is, and and what does she represent, and what does she want, and well, you know, it's got a really, really severe side as as, as well as the guy does. She's feminine. She, she's well feminine, although she's not colorful. Mm -hmm. And she's quite daring, to not say kinky. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so- let kinky side come you. from you. I've got to ask, I mean, has this, have you always been a bit of a, a not, a, on the naughty side of things? I get this feeling that you do enjoy that. Oh yeah, concert. absolutely, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. She, <laughs> she was a naughty one. Um, no, yeah, oh God. God, yeah, I was a troubled kid. I was, you know, and fantastically like made made a movie. Like I was, in fact, well, you know, um, the story on the film is based on a true story. Let's just leave it there. Okay. Um, no, yeah, I was a story. story. Okay, okay. But tell me a little bit. Of, so my understanding is that you grew up in Barcelona, and then of course you went to school in in London. But of course you've got the UK accent. Where talk to me about the Spanish side of things. Where does that come into play into your work? Well, I think. You know, I, I had someone really big coming to me on the LVMH thing, just being like, oh, but uh, you're Spanish. I was like, yeah, I am. <laughs> and, um, and they said, let's keep it as a day. Um, they said, oh, but 
you know, you, you sound British. I was like, oh yeah, well, because I studied there and lived for 10 years. And um, they said, oh, but then it's really weird that you don't have a Spanish accent being Spanish. I was like, listen, which is an amalgamation of experiences. Like who's like, I mean, I was like, I can say something in Spanish if you want to like, you know, <laughs> but I, 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 you know, I'm very Spanish and. I mean, I see it in your clothes. I mean, what, what, does it, like, what does it mean really? You know, yes, British accent because I lived there for 10 years, for goodness sake. You know, I could have an accent from Arkansas, but, but I've never lived there. So, and I moved to I moved to the UK when I was about nineteen. Mm -hmm. So, that was a long time ago. And obviously, you know, my parents used to send me abroad to study um, English. So that's that's why I don't have this strong Spanish accent. Although I could have it if you want. Um, I'm sure you no, need so, it from time to time. Yeah, no, oh, only when I'm really, really tired. <laughs> But never, no, never mind. I think, listen, and now, now just getting deep into the conversation, I think, um, you know, when, whenever I was in the, living in the UK, I think everyone made, made it really clear that I, that I came across as being very, very Spanish in the way that, you know, although I can get around things on a very British way, I think I'm quite straightforward. And, you know, there's, there's something about it. And, you know, I think it's just, I don't believe in nationalities. That's it. You know, yeah, I do feel Spanish, but... I do consider myself a British designer for, because for goodness sake, that country gave me an education. Mm -hmm. Whilst in Spain, that wouldn't have happened because believe me, it's really tough in here. Yeah. So um, I'm Spanish, yeah, of course I am. Am I British? Well, I don't know, maybe, mm -hmm. but who cares? That's the most important thing. I mean, really 21st century and we're talking about nationalities. And I think that's, that's really something that I'm against. And it's just these things of like framing things from, you know, two thousand boxes. Yeah, right. It's like I don't know. I'm I'm just an amalgamation of experiences. You know, I lived for so many years with um with a Scandinavian person, a Scandinavian person, and you know maybe I got something from there as well. Or I dated like this person. From, I don't know. It's like um. But however, there's something really matador about my look. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. That's what I would say when I look at your pieces that definitely there is that part of that Spanish heritage comes in and through that way, like the elongated ways. Yeah, and you know, and the, and the v neck sort of thing. And I don't know, yeah, of course. I mean, of course you would, because yeah. I lived in Spain for 19 years before I moved out. But, you know, it's almost like, what do I have to justify myself? Like, is that really it? Like, do you, you know, are you expecting a flamenco sort of? collection from a Spanish designer isn't that really a cliche you know yeah, that's sort of it I like I carry I carry my heritage wherever I go mm -hmm. and you know I I defend the country I was born and I talk about the, the country I was born with you know loads of respect and, and loving and I do consider myself a very very warm person Spanish mm -hmm. you know, Latin like that's something that I have within my DNA and you probably you've seen it as well however and thankfully um, after living in the UK for 10 years, I'm quite good now at getting around things instead of being too confrontational. And that's something you can only get from, you know, That'll help you with in other countries and, you know, experiencing and getting to know other cultures. And, and that's what's great about it, you know, and it's about why just getting one when you can get two. <laughs> Well, listen, you talk about carrying, you know, your, of course, we all carry our heritage and our, our backstory and our origin story with us wherever we go. But I want to know now then, where do you want to go from here? So do you, in terms of your brand, in terms of, you know, where you want to want to progress? I mean, is it important for you to show at, you know, you know, Paris or Milan Fashion Week during menswear, or couture, or ready to wear? How are you thinking about how you want to push your brand going forward, especially with the new dynamics in terms of seasons and sales and, you know, direct to consumer? I mean, there's so many different options of how to present right. yourself now. Right. I think if, if we've learned something about, um, you know, about this year, is that you cannot really plan ahead that much. Hmm. So wherever I want to go, I know where I'm going to go from now until June. What comes later, let's wait and see, you know? And I think, I think it's something really good. There's something really good about this, that you cannot really plan ahead that much. Mm -hmm. Having said that, um, having the Paris Fashion Week platform and the support of, um, you know, um, the, the French Fashion Council, you know, that's, that in, 
on itself, it's just so good. And the fact that they became so flexible and that they understand young designers, you know, the fact that I can present a video now based on a collection that I'm going to present in 10 days after, but still be part of it, you know, and still be considered as part of it. And it's, it's just so enriching and it's just so, so, so great. It's, it's so inspiring, especially coming from a country where that's not a reality. Yeah. That's just brilliant, isn't it? And of course, I mean, you know, I want to belong to these family for as, as long as they want me. And, mm -hmm. um, but then obviously we need to learn from these new system. And as much as I want to keep myself in these, if I want to launch a Bandai. Archie? No, there's, there's really something about this breaking the rules kind of thing that your internet connection is unstable. Yeah, is you, me? Yeah. you froze there for a second. Okay, can you see me now? Yes, I can, I can. But yeah, okay. I mean, it's like you're talking about, you know, wanting to launch, you know, out of the blue, a cockerchief and just do, you know, rolling with it as you see fit, what feels right, right now. Right, exactly. And I think, I think that's, that's really great. And it's almost like going back to, going back to, the start when fashion wasn't in fashion. And that, that just feels really great, you know? It feels, I remember we had a talk at uni was it with Alistair Mackey, I think it was. And, you know, he was saying, he was describing what the scenario was like before fashion was hypey, you know, before the internet, before, you know, when you wouldn't even know what a show was and unless you knew someone that was attending or someone from the team and, and that just, or you work for a magazine or whatever, but that was really reduced, wasn't it? And I think it's, it's gonna go back to that sort of like do it yourself kind of thing. But mm -hmm. obviously with the, you know, with the media channels we've got nowadays where you can collaborate with other people and do really interesting stuff. So I think we need to go back to that sort of like starred origin that everything was more, yeah, do it yourself. You know, if you wanna, mm -hmm. if you want a white jumper, just, paint it in white. Why mm -hmm. do you need to, you know what I mean? Like just work with the means you have. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really great. And you know, there's something really punk about it. Although, you know, not in a literal way, but um, you know what I mean, you know, that, yeah, there's no, something, no, no. I, I think, there's something I think really moving know. about it. And I, I know, I think you're right. I think there's gonna be a, a rebellious, I think people are gonna be a bit more rebellious going forward in fashion. I think people yeah, are gonna- and, and, that mean, and don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean not being part of establishment. Yeah. because because especially, especially establishment, and I'm only talking about the French Fashion Council, establishment that really supports young designers and that understand that to move forward, you need young people, not necessarily young people as in young in age, mm -hmm. but fresh minded people exactly. that you know, try and push things forward. You know, it doesn't really matter whether you're 21, 19, 16 or 65, you know, that's, that's Gaultier for goodness sake, you know, he, he's, he's been pushing through like for the past what 40 years is it 30 years i don't know yeah it's all a state of mind age is just a number i think so it's more like they understand that in order to move forward and it's i mean you know for the sake of it fashion is an industry that shapes the future and dresses it up so i think it's good it's it's great when really like establishment really like understands that the only way of moving forward is just breaking with the past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Archie, I'm looking forward to seeing how you break with the past with this video in your collection that'll, that'll drop so in much. February. Thank you so much. This is the first, I hope, of many conversations between the two of us, because this has just Thank been a delight. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll speak to you soon. You. Bye. Bye, love. Bye, sweetie.